Law Warrior Online. BNDR-01A. Bandersnatch. Overview. Chief Tech of the 12 Star Guards, Philippius Banda, used his considerable reputation to recruit former mercenary techs orphaned, like Banda, by the clan's destruction of their units. His goal was to offer mercenaries the weapons they needed, at a price they could afford. Banda battle mechs started by upgrading older battle mechs with the recovered technology that became available after the clan invasion. Designed by Philippius Banda, the Bandersnatch was the first original design to be offered by the company. Capabilities With a weapons mix based on the mech refits most often requested by his clients, Banda modelled his design on the popular Marauder, giving the Bandersnatch a similar profile and style and ensuring a large supply of compatible parts. Two Armstrong Class B cluster guns and three Holly LRM5s provide long-range firepower. Six Magna Mark II medium lasers, two to each arm, and a pair facing rear provide close-range backup for the ballistic and missile weaponry. With so much ammunition, the torso ammo bins are equipped with case technology. During initial tests, both rear-firing lasers melted through their heat jackets. Unable to determine the cause of this, Banda raised the lasers half a metre, but the company recommends that field technicians keep a close eye on the condition of these heat jackets. Deployment Starting from virtually nothing, Banda battle mechs lacked the production faculties owned by the likes of Defiant Industries or Irian battle mechs. Each Bandersnatch had to be painstakingly assembled by hand, taking months to complete. After failing to interest any major manufacturer, Banda turned to Cressley Warworks on Epsilon Eridani. Looking to expand its range of products after the success of the line holder design, Cressley was interested in a heavy mech design that was simple enough that a company as limited as Banda battle mechs could produce it. Mercenaries are the main users of the machine, and the ready supply of compatible parts is yet another selling point for the mech. Many of the surviving Chaos March worlds have also purchased the design in some numbers, which has complicated attempts by Capellan Confederation and Trinity Alliance forces to secure the region. Variants Upon securing the cooperation of Cressley Warworks, Philippius Banda began to look to improve his design further, focusing on the most important consideration from his customers, cost. He recently unveiled his new BNDR-01B Bandersnatch. Incorporating new light engine technology dropped the cost of the variant by more than 3 million C-bills while improving its survivability, especially with the inclusion of case in the left torso. The weapons array has been modified as well, with the Armstrong autocannon replaced by a Magna Hellstar PPC in the right arm and an Imperator automatic Ultra 10 in the left. The Holly Streak 2 launcher replaces the head-mounted LRM5, and the troublesome rear-firing lasers have been replaced with more armor. Notable Mech Warriors Major Simon Verhoeven as executive officer of Greenberg's Godzillas, Simon Verhoeven has been as involved in the mercenary unit's theatrical exploits as in battlefield operations. An expert in planning and execution of visual effects, Simon developed a system through which the regiment can quickly mock up its battle mechs to resemble other models. Though initially intended for filming battle sequences in the epic The Thirteenth Mech Warrior, the Godzillas also use their unique abilities in combat. Deployed to free up DCMS line units for the drive against the Smoke Jaguars, the mercenaries were spread across five worlds. When bandits struck Salford in force, the two companies of mercenaries rigged their mechs to look like clam omnimechs. Not wishing to tangle with what appeared to be an overwhelming force, the bandits retreated, without a shot being exchanged. Verhoeven's favourite assignment was for a sci-fi monster hollow movie in which his bandersnatch, suitably costumed, trampled a scale model of the Imperial City on Luthien into rubble. Mech Warrior Devin Munro No one knows precisely where Devin Munro hails from. He first appeared on record as a member of the Hessian Hotheads when the mercenaries resurfaced on Gibson in 3061. Devin has a nondescript appearance with a beard, possibly false, and a Northfield accent, probably assumed. His tactical skills are less than sterling, and on more than one occasion he has been drawn into deadly situations from which only his exceptional gunnery skill has saved him. The Bandersnatch, the mech that was, well, I guess it was lucky that the guy who designed it was called Banda, so he could come up with, hmm, what's my mech name going to be? Yes. 
allow me to peruse the names of machines that have been allowed to be used over these years. Yes, yes. Hmm. No, I can't use the butter knife. No, I can't use this. No, I can't use the brandy wine. No. Hmm. Ban my name is Banda. What is the creature name? There is the Banda Snatch. Yes, I have the name for my mech. Here it is. The Banda Snatch. 75 tons. Chassis. Banda Custom 1. Power plant. Vla. 300 XL. A cruise speed of 43 kph. Maximum speed of 65. No jump jets. Armor provided by Valiant Chainmail. Armament. 2 Armstrong Class B. Cluster guns. 6 Magna Mark 2. Medium lasers. 3 Holly LRM 5 racks. Manufactured by Banda Battlemex and Cressley Warworks, primary factory on Terra Firma, Banda Battlemex, Epsilon Eridani by Cressley Warworks, communication system provided by Winston, Mega Boozy Mark 9, and targeting and tracking system, the Winston Sidewinder. <coughs> anyway, uh, the Bandersnatch, yeah, uh, 20 heat dissipation from 10 double heat sinks, uh, nice 4 and 6 walk and run speed, not too bad for 75 tons. No, you know what? Not a bad looking mech. I don't dislike the Bandersnatch, uh, actually. Uh, it it's uh, it's got big old shoulder pads. It's very eighties in that regard. Um, but you know what? It looks like a battle mech from BattleTech. It doesn't look like a, you know like a Gundam or something from you know another another universe kind of thing. It it looks fine. Um, it's got twenty three CT armor, ten on the rear, twenty three on the right and left torso, eight on the rear, and eighteen arm and leg armor in total. So not too bad. The cluster guns. Don't know why they named that in this right up. They're LB10s, if you didn't guess. So it's got twin LB10s, pretty good punch. Uh, it's got uh, basically six medium lasers, with two of them being CT rear mounted, and then the triple LRM5s, which are spread across the side torsos. And t it says head mounted, but if you see the artwork, it, it, I'd say it's more CT mounted, really. It would have been cool to have had the five mounted along the top in a line, and then you can imagine them firing up and then over toward the target, but. Yeah, either way, because the mounting there on an angle pointing down means that they launch forward and then go up. A bit of an odd arrangement, really. Uh, but they each, I think each launcher has a ton. No, it's two tons of ammo spread between the three, which is pretty good, to be honest. It's a lot of shots. And each LB has 20 shots each, so it's got a ton of ammunition for each uh, gun, which isn't bad. Um, yeah, I, I don't mind it. I don't mind the Bandersnatch. It's a, it's a decent machine. Um... Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's another one that if uh, if a model was available, I'd pick it up, because it looks quite good. But, uh, yeah, it's another one, another one uh, in the can, so to speak. There we go, uh, Bandersnatch. So, uh, have a good one all, catch you next time. Bye-bye.